Hello and welcome back to the uh, Max Runout uh, YouTube channel. Uh, my name is Paul um, and today uh, we're off uh, uh, and running on a brand new project. Uh, we're going to try to build something uh, called a harmonic analyzer. Uh, it's a, a kind of mechanical computer uh, that was originally developed in the uh, in the 19th century and I'll have a lot more to say uh, about uh, the total project uh, uh, in future videos, but uh, right now, um, uh, well, actually, I got a link to a video about uh, uh, that got me kind of excited about this project, and I put that in the description at the end. Uh, but for now, we're going to concentrate on gears. Um, uh, when you uh, look at the uh, project, uh, you'll see that it uh, requires a lot of gears, probably about 50, and uh, uh, they they are they are in all different sizes. One group of uh, uh, gears uh, goes from uh, six teeth uh, all the way up to uh, 120 teeth uh, in increments of six. And uh, so there's a lot, that's a lot of different sizes to make. And like I say, some of the gears have got a lot of teeth. Another group of gears uh, uh, are all 120 teeth, uh, but they also have to have a uh, they have to drive a camshaft and uh, or a cam that will. Uh, uh, drive some other parts and uh, so those gears are more complex than average. Uh, initially I thought maybe I could uh, buy all the gears um, and then maybe somehow figure out how to deal with the cam problem but uh, I looked uh, from one manufacturer to another and to find somebody that has all the number, number of different tooth counts that I need um, uh, was uh, impossible to find. I looked at a lot of different manufacturers and there would always be a few uh, that that weren't part of their line, at least their standard products line. I guess I could have had them all custom made, but uh, I decided that if I was going to uh, do this project in uh, in a way that was affordable, um, I would have to uh, learn how to make gears. Uh, so uh, I did. I uh, have made quite a few. Uh, well, I've made a few gears so far, not very many. And uh, but uh, it turns out that it's uh, it's doable, and uh, it. Uh, yeah, it, there it, there were some cut and dry, but uh, I got, uh, let's see, is that focusing? I think it is. Yeah, I got, uh, I've succeeded in making some, and I'm going to need to make a lot more uh, in order to make this work. Uh, the first thing I did uh, uh, was I, uh, I looked at uh, how some other folks have built gears, and um, uh, and and I had uh, I, I learned uh, from watching other videos of other expert machinists who make gears um, and that kind of the gold standard for doing that is a thing called a dividing head looks like this it has uh, it has a chuck on uh, one end here that uh, yeah, you can use to hold a, a mandrel or something that would hold your gear and uh, it has a uh, crank down here and there's like a 40 to 1 worm drive between this crank and the and the chuck and uh, you uh, and on behind this uh, this crank is a as a plate with lots and lots of holes in it uh, there's circles of holes with different hole counts and in principle by uh, uh, by ch choosing the right plate and the right circle of holes uh, you could uh, make uh, just about any gear and uh, of course the, um, the there are a few exceptions and about three of those exceptions end up in the list of gears I have to make but uh, I could have uh, made another plate uh, with a different number of holes in it and accomplished the same thing and so uh, it was certainly doable with this kind of a device. Uh, now um, machines like that are, uh, are uh, big and heavy and expensive and uh, if you look on YouTube, some of the uh, expert machinists that have done it have found uh, uh, used machines that they were able to restore, uh, and uh, but they're hard to find, and especially with all the plates uh, with them. Uh, and uh, but there was uh, I did find on all over the internet uh, some cheap uh, Chinese knockoffs of the old uh, Brown and Sharp. Um, uh, machines and the one in the in the uh, picture uh, was was such a machine. It's uh, one that's available, you know, very economically on the uh, on the internet, and uh, uh, it looked like it would uh, solve most of my problem. So, like, how bad could it be? Well, 
uh, turns out pretty bad. I, uh, uh, the one I got, uh, uh, it was it had a lot of backlash in it, and um, it, it would, did have the ability to adjust uh, the bearings uh, on the main shaft that uh, connected uh, to the chuck, and, uh, and also uh, uh, on the shaft that uh, held the worm gear. The problem was things were uh, not machined correctly, and if you adjusted it so the backlash went away, then uh, on, on, on one 180 degrees of rotation, you could, uh, was fairly smooth, but on the other 180 degrees, it took uh, two men and a boy to turn the crank uh, because it just bound up in that position. And it turned out that the that that was true for the main shaft that went uh, to the chuck, and also for the shaft that drove the worm gear. So uh, it really wasn't <laughs> wasn't working very well at all. But I did try uh, tried to, to do the best compromise that I could in, in adjusting the. Uh, the clearance is there so that it, I could get a full 360 degrees rotation, but like I say, then it had to, had some backlash, and I tried making some gears with it, and uh, the results were poor. So uh, I kind of gave up on that, and uh, uh, was at a loss at first uh, for what I could do. Uh, but I did. Uh, I do have uh, a uh, another piece of equipment. It's a rotary table. And by mounting the rotary table in a vertical position uh, on the, on the mill table, uh, I could uh, I could accomplish the same thing, except that I would not have all the dividing um, uh, the dividing plates that uh, this machine has. Um, but I learned two things. I, I guess uh, in the process of working with that machine, uh, the dividing head, I I learned a that uh, it. it that kind of a cheap mach uh, machine is just not sufficiently accurate for the uh, the kind of gears I want to make, especially the ones with a lot of teeth. And uh, the second thing I guess uh, I learned is that uh, it's a very very tedious process. Uh, you have to uh, you have to uh, count the number of turns of the crank that you do, and then you have to then there'll be some number of holes that go beyond that. There is a little gizmo to help you uh, make that easy, and if you're only making one or two gears, uh, it's probably the best way to go. But I have to make um, on the order of 50 gears, and uh, um, that means thousands of, uh, especially, and they have high tooth counts, so that means thousands of uh, uh, of tooth uh, uh, I, of teeth, I guess you, you want to say, and the odds of getting through that without. Uh, without making a mistake are just, you know, slim to none, especially for an old guy like me. So I, I didn't think that uh, that was ever going to work. I could try it, but it was uh, going to be a long, slow process. So I decided uh, it, uh, it, would be, uh, it would be easier, I think, to find a way to automate that process. And uh, so uh, uh, in this uh, video, this first video in the series, I'm going to go through uh, how uh, I made uh, the uh, the gear a uh, uh, one gear at least manually. And I'll show you the steps in the process and the resulting uh, gear, and then we'll uh, in future videos we'll talk more about uh, how to automate the process. So uh, the next step we're going to be uh, working on the mill. Uh, this is my basic uh, setup uh, for cutting gears. Uh, based on my Bridgeport vertical mill and uh, on the mill table uh, is a, a rotary table I guess what the CNC guys would call a fourth axis and uh, a tailstock behind it and uh, we're going to use this to test out the uh, rotary table for uh, for making gears um, uh, this is a a grizzly rotary table. Uh, we'll get in a little closer here uh, so you can see it better. I bought this table from uh, Grizzly some years ago uh, for another project uh, but it turned out to be uh, 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 a better choice for the, the gear cutting. Let's see, it's a model um, G1049. Uh, I checked on the web, they're still available from Grizzly. And uh, I found it to be a, uh, a much, much better uh, product uh, in terms of uh, backlash and construction in general than the uh, 
uh, than the dividing head that I uh, talked about earlier. I've got it set up with a tailstock so that I can uh, put the uh, uh, the uh, gears uh, between centers. I got a center in the uh, in the uh, that's a the rotary table has an MT2 center in it, and I've got a, a center in there, um, and uh, the uh, the uh, tailstock has got a uh, a uh, a taper on the end too, so that I can uh, uh, put the uh, put a mandrel in between there to uh, mount the gears on. To get started on this project, I had to make a number of uh, of uh, parts uh, and tools. Uh, the first one is a mandrel for the uh, uh, for the gear cutters. Um, I bought a set of gear cutters uh, off of eBay and uh, uh, they uh, for the uh, appropriate uh, uh, pitch and uh, <coughs> I made a mandrel for them this is a these have a 13 millimeter bore so I uh, machined this out of a piece of stock that I had um, I think it was 7 8 stock I cut this down to 3 quarters and uh, the, uh, I made some wrench flats on here so I could tighten the uh, tighten the screw on the end, and uh, the gear cutter drops on here. And uh, I made this cap for it to uh, hold tight against the uh, cutter when I tighten the screw. <clears throat> and so that's how that goes together. And uh, these are some gear blanks I made for some of the gear sizes that I need. Uh, these were uh, are turned out of brass. I had some different size uh, pieces of brass that I was able to use for this. And uh, to uh, to do this to machine these, it's hard to machine something that's thin like this and and get it nice and square and uniform thickness. Uh, I made a little gizmo for uh, my lathe. Uh, this was uh, based on a video uh, on Tom Lipton's channel. Uh, uh, he uh, uh, made this. In fact, he made another version of this too. But uh, uh, the way it works is this. Uh, let me turn around. I'm going to turn you around here, and uh, we'll take a look at the lathe. <clears throat> when you cut off a uh, a blank like this, uh, either with a either with a saw or uh, um, uh, with a cutoff tool, you basically you've you faced off one's end of it when you did the original when you cut it from the original piece of stock, and then it would be faced off. And of course, it's drilled and and so on. Then you cut it off on the other side, but the other side is not going to be square, and the thickness is probably not going to be just right either. So uh, you'd like to be able to hold it in your vise somehow or in your truck somehow, so that it's nice and square, and be able to. To face it off, and uh, the solution to that uh, that Tom suggested, and boy, it really works great, is you build this thing, and uh, now you can drop the, the uh, part in your chuck and uh, give it a, a knock so that it's uh, good and uh, solid in there, and now it's uh, it's it's parallel to the surface of the chuck, uh, and you can go come in with your uh, facing tool and uh, and face it off. And uh, it is parallel um, <clears throat> because uh, it has these adjustment screws on the back. And uh, what I did was uh, I drilled and tapped those holes in there, and then I I uh, put put this in the in the chuck, and I held it in with uh, a uh, uh, center uh, on, from the other side. Uh, and uh, held it in tight and then I turned the chuck around and used an indicator to on each of these surfaces to confirm and then made minor adjustments with the uh, with the screws until I got this uh, to where it's exactly square uh, yeah, and the parts then come out the same thickness on all sides uh, and when I got done I uh, I loctited these uh, 
screws in place and uh, that, that works out really well. <coughs> The other part I made was the uh, mandrel for the uh, the gears themselves. It's again a piece of stock that I had, and uh, <clears throat> I turned it down to a half inch to fit inside the uh, gear blank, and um, I made a couple of spacers to go in here, uh, mainly because when I get to the larger size gears, I want to be able to put some uh, some larger diameter spacers in there to give it some mass to uh, dampen any of the vibrations I might get from the from the cutting operation. Uh, but anyway, this is a three quarter inch uh, uh, mandrel, and uh, the uh, cutter will come right across here and cut the teeth in the gear. On the other end, um, I uh, added a lathe dog that I made, and uh, I'll show you how that uh, fits onto the uh, onto the uh, rotary table. <clears throat> oh, the, um, the mandrel and the lathe dog fit on the on the center here and uh, on this side uh, I, uh, the, the, I took, you took advantage of the T-slots in the in the table and I put a uh, piece of 3 8 uh, uh, all thread in there and I turned this end down to a quarter inch and actually I don't know if it's a little hard to see but I, I chamfered the end and then I made another groove over here so that if this just uh, just enters the hole in the lathe dog I now have the ability to take up any misalignment because uh, this will swivel back and forth on this on this point so uh, that fits over here and the uh, <clears throat> the mandrel slips over that uh, point, and uh, I tighten up the uh, tailstock here, and now I got the ability to uh, uh, turn this. And uh, the neat thing about this this grizzly, uh, uh, in fact, the whole arrangement, uh, but the grizzly table in particular, is uh, I can't feel any backlash at all in there. Uh, and I'm turning pretty hard on this thing, much harder I think than uh, it'll, any torque it'll get from the uh, cutting operation. Um, one of the secrets to that um, is this little lever down here. Let me see if uh, you can see that on the camera. <clears throat> Not really so well. Let me turn around, turn you around a little bit. And. Uh, <clears throat> This lever right here is the one that uh, adjusts the uh, uh, the clearance on the uh, on the worm drive. You can loosen this little uh, lo loosen this uh, locking bolt here, and then move that up and down. If you move it up all the way, it completely disconnects it from the uh, the worm, and then this is uh, rotates freely. But if you adjust this uh, just right, you don't have to get it real tight, but you get the worm down well into uh, meshed with the uh, the gear there, and uh, uh, it it's very very smooth. It uh, it it turns easy, uh, but it has essentially zero backlash. So I'm really happy with that arrangement and uh, with the uh, uh, the Grizzly table in general. Okay, now we're uh, getting pretty close to uh, cutting a gear. Uh, earlier, I had uh, brought the uh, the two centers uh, real close together and uh, uh, made sure that they were at exactly the same height. Uh, but now that the, that the uh, tailstock is backed off, I have to check to make sure they're in the same alignment in the Y direction. And so to do that, uh, I've got in the, uh, <coughs> in the uh, collet here, I've got a, a little rig with an indicator. You can see uh, that indicator is uh, is looking at the uh, the side of this piece and uh, by raising the table up and down I can uh, get the the, the uh, sensitive part of the indicator to be at uh, exactly the center of the uh, of the uh, mandrel and uh, we're dropping it down uh, down now 
and we're bringing it back up and at the point where the uh, indicator reads the highest that's uh, that's the center of the, uh, the circle or the cylinder there side of the cylinder so uh, now uh, I have been uh, doing a little work on this I've been bumping the uh, uh, table around uh, or the tailstock around to get it in alignment and uh, this is where we are right now we're pretty close less than a thousandth over that whole <coughs> length of the thing so <laughs> the gear is only a quarter of an inch wide so uh, or a little more than a quarter but uh, so it's going to be very 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 close uh, uh, for that Now the next step um, is to get the uh, the cutter <coughs> down at the center of this uh, uh, of the well center of the gear blank, which is also the center of uh, the uh, the mandrel. Uh, so I know this mandrel is uh, is uh, three quarters of an inch uh, in diameter. I measured these uh, cutters; they're 0.122 uh, thick thick. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is get a, um, a small parallel and set it on top of the on top of the cutter on the flat portion of the cutter. Uh, and then I'm going to nurse this uh, uh, nurse the table up and down until I can just feel this scrape on the uh, uh, scrape on, on the uh, on the mandrel. And then right there. Back up a little bit. Definitely not scraping there. I'm only moving about. Well, I moved about a thousandth there, and it, and now I can definitely feel it scraping. So you can you can you can tell you know within a within a, a couple of thousandths anyway when that uh, hits the center. So now uh, I know that this the top of this is is uh, even with the top of that, and so if I take the the 750 thousandths and the 122 thousandths and add them together uh, wait a minute no I want to take 750 thousandths and I want to subtract 122 thousandths uh, stand by while I do that okay I do have to go down half the thickness of this bar so uh, uh, and then half the thickness of the uh, of the cutter so altogether that's um, uh, 750 minus 122 divided by 2 is 314. So uh, if I zero out my z axis, go down 1, 2, 3. And 14 thousandths. Okay, so I'm at the correct uh, height now. The cutter should be right in the center. Well, no, it isn't. I went down instead of up. Up three hundred fourteen thousandths. Hey, now that looks like it's in the center. <clears throat> okay. So now the next step is we want to touch off uh, on the. Um, on the gear blank. Well, I got a couple things to do. Uh, I got uh, so I want to be able to use the uh, the uh, uh, power um, feed uh, on the mill, so I'm got I have to set the uh, the stops on that so I can stop it back and forth when it's cutting, and then I'll. 
then I'll touch you off. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, now we're going to touch off. <coughs> see some little uh, chips start to fly from the... I may have to get my head in the way here. I just saw a couple of tiny chips fly from there. <laughs> so we are <clears throat> we are touched off now. We're gonna back off the table now. And I got my stop set to automatically stop the table. Okay, now um we need to bring the table this way um, by the amount of the depth of the teeth. And in this case, uh, this, it's 0 .068. <clears throat> so we're using the uh, <clears throat> we're using the uh, DRO to move us in 0 .068. and lock the table <clears throat> and now we're ready to cut our first tooth I think um, um, I got the uh, uh, the rotary table set on zero uh, oh I should bring up one other thing uh, this this rig would not work with all the gears that I'm uh, uh, trying to make, uh, not manually anyway. Uh, I have to, uh, I got to cut a lot of different uh, tooth counts uh, and uh, this, uh, since this uh, rotary table is a, a 90 to 1 ratio uh, for uh, this particular gear I've chosen to make now is a 30 tooth gear so divide that by three you get three rotations of the crank <coughs> will give you uh, uh, three rotations of the crank will give you uh, one tooth spacing. Uh, the uh, 90 divided by 30 gives you uh, three uh, crank rotations. So, uh, <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to make this one manually and then we're going to end up automating the process but this will give me a good uh, chance to test uh, how accurate a gear I can make before I uh, go to the trouble of uh, putting together all the automation. So, um, I think we're ready to roll here. Um, here we go on our first tooth.
Okay, we're down in a moment, a moment of truth here, the last uh, few teeth to go. This is uh, where we find out if we got our math right and everything, and uh, do we end up with a half a tooth or uh, a whole tooth or what? So, here we go. Okay, we'll take it apart here and uh, we'll see what our gear looks like. <clears throat> well, here's our gear. <clears throat> looks pretty good to me. <clears throat> I'll uh, do some more measurements on it, check the... the uh, uh, the pitch and so on, but uh, right now it looks uh, it looks pretty decent. Um, <clears throat> the uh, you know the the thing you always look for is do the teeth come out even? And of course they they did, and uh, the uh, uh, I mean the teeth uh, shape look right to me, but uh, we'll do some more uh, looking at it and. Uh, let you know how it came out, but uh, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, the thing that uh, the thing about it is now this is exactly the system that I'll use with the automation. I did not lock the table after each uh, each turn because that won't happen with uh, the automation. But there was so little backlash in the thing that uh, that uh, from what I can tell, I'm going to look at it some more with a magnifying glass. But what, from what I can tell, uh, those teeth are, are just about perfect. So. Uh, the next uh, segment will probably, uh, <clears throat> well, we will uh, start on the, start some work on the automation part of it, and uh, and show you what uh, how we're going to do it, how we're going to drive the uh, well, both uh, the table moving back and forth, and also the uh, uh, the advancing of the uh, uh, of the uh, rotary table. Like I said, this gear was a 30 tooth gear, and uh, <clears throat> you know, 30 teeth or 45 teeth or 90 teeth uh, is going to be easy to make by just cranking the thing to the same uh, point each time. But other odd, odd numbers of teeth and unusual <clears throat> combinations are uh, going to things. Anything that's not divisible by 90 is going to require uh, a certain number of rotations plus a certain number of degrees, and uh, that'd be just about impossible to to do. Uh, uh, by hand, especially uh, when you're going to make a lot of gears, uh, it's 50 some for this job, and uh, <clears throat> and also uh, uh, high tooth counts. Uh, this was only 30 teeth. A lot of the gears in this thing are going to be 100 teeth or more. So uh, uh, we're looking forward to the uh, automation to to make that job easier. Uh, and uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.